Hello, welcome to my channel comments and ampersands, my name is Sarah and in this video I'm getting rid of a bunch of stuff. A little bit of background. It is the 23rd of November 2019 and exactly one year ago today I purchased this house and when I was going through the moving process I was just astounded by how much stuff I owned and stuff that I hadn't really used like books that I had read but didn't enjoy merch that I had gotten in a subscription box and I had never used bookish shirts bookish jewelry bookish everything there was so much stuff and I used to think that it made me happy and maybe it did but it doesn't anymore now it just feels like clutter I've already filmed a few segments for this here and there but if I had started this at the beginning of 2019, this would have been a much longer video because I went through my shelves earlier this year and I unhauled 88 books, but I only really like properly sold a few of them and the rest of them I've just been kind of like putting in my bookshelf in another room. I'm just going to get rid of them all in one big go at the end of 2019. It's now intimidating. It's almost like an entire Billy bookcase full of books that I need to get rid of. I'm going to try and force myself to come to terms with the fact that maybe I'm not going to reread that book even if I liked it. Maybe I'm not going to ever wear this piece of jewellery again even if it's pretty. And just give the stuff to people who will get genuine enjoyment out of it. There's a Facebook group which is like an Aussie buy swap sell group for like bookish merch and stuff and that's where I have sold a lot of my books and merch that I've already gotten rid of. First things first, I'm going to try and sell the stuff on that Facebook group. If I can't sell it, I'm going to donate it to my local charity, probably a lifeline, and maybe someone will get enjoyment out of it, maybe they won't, but it won't be in my possession anymore. That's my aim. I feel like I do need to make these videos for me so that I personally can look back and remember how much stuff I had, how long it took to get through that stuff, and what an ordeal it was so that I don't backslide. I don't think I will. I'm a pretty goal-oriented person and I think that once I put my mind to something I'm really not going to change it or regret it that much. I don't know if I'm going to be a true minimalist at any stage in my life but I want my stuff and there's no time like the present so this is how I'm gonna do it. I went through my wardrobe a few months ago and I decided to donate quite a lot of clothes or what I consider to be a lot of clothes. I have this little like set of drawers that I bought off Facebook Marketplace and I put everything in the drawers and it was all neatly folded. So everything does fit. Yes, they are still good quality and that is a great thing because that means that when I donate them or when I sell them, people can enjoy them. This is the cabinet as a whole and these are all of my like longer socks that I tend to wear with boots or that I bought, quite frankly, because of like Sock Sunday posts on Instagram and all that sort of stuff. So this is what it's like at the moment. And the socks are folded quite neatly. I am quite impressed with myself for that. But I don't use all these socks. And some of them I don't like that much. The first things that I'm going to pull out are these uh, Fantastic Beasts socks. This is like a Makusa pattern. I don't mind the pattern, but the socks are a kind of thinner material. So if I'm going to be wearing them with my boots for winter, then what I actually want them for is to keep my feet warm. It's not like a massive difference. I did get rid of all these socks that I'm really not going to wear and some tights and these gloves can go back in here. But I do feel like Leo. All of these socks are ones that I would actually wear with my boots when it's winter, when it's cold. I have and I will and I do. If I ever want to do Sock Sunday posts again, I do have a good variety. I will look through this drawer like during winter and if there are any that I tend to avoid or that I find aren't as comfortable as I remember them being, then I'll just get rid of them. But aside from that, there's like some work stockings and things that I do use, I just don't use very often, so they're not in my usual drawer. So, that's that drawer. This is like a drawer of some fandom shirts and some regular shirts, but mostly fandom shirts. Who needs this many t-shirts? 
36 shirts and I know that there's at least one that's like in the wash. So that's a lot of fucking shirts, man. Eight. I got rid of eight. My pajamas are literally falling apart, so that can be more of a pajama shirt. This Merida one, I'm just not gonna wear it. I'm just not. As much as I love that print, somebody else will love wearing that shirt even more. And the same for this Hufflepuff one. And this is gonna become an exercise shirt. 20, 21, 22. Okay, well that's better. That's like 14 shirts that I've gotten rid of, or that are being repurposed for other things. So I'm pretty, I'm okay with that. This is what the drawer is like now. So this is like probably the rest of what I need to go through. I did go through it a few months ago, but I think that I can probably make some deeper cuts. <laughs> This one has like all the headbands that I wear in my photos, so I'm not getting rid of any of them. I love them all. And then we have the bookish totes. Green, black and blue. Then I've got my brave one. And then I've got these three that can end up becoming grocery bags at some point in their life. Got rid of a couple of bags. I thought there was a lot more in there. I think I must have gotten rid of more than I thought. So, that's okay. And then I've just got, I don't, I haven't really got very many bags. I've got a book bag, got a Harry Potter backpack, and like two, kind of going out purses. A lot of the stuff on the bottom here is just making me feel like the place is cluttered. Once I actually get around to donating slash selling all this stuff, then I'm gonna have so much room for activities. I'm over here, this is part of my prop cupboard. Uh, so this is in my study. My study is just like the smallest bedroom in my house. Two shelves over there. One and a half shelves here, and then over here is the wardrobe. And I set a goal for myself, which was any props that I have, anything that I want to use for Bookstagram or for Booktube or anything like that, it has to fit in this cupboard. And so I got rid of a lot of stuff, and that's great, but there's still more stuff that I could get rid of. This is stuff that I have for like journaling and general craft things so I don't really need to look at that. I've already kind of gone through that and I go through that regularly and I use that stuff. This bottom shelf down here, uh, that's where my stuffed toys were. These are the two that I've kept from this thing. One is this little uh, stuffed toy of Hedwig which I have had for ages and then this owl I'm definitely not getting rid of because this is like a puppet and this is what I use whenever I do my Harry Potter Christmas tree. This is the tree topper. This is like the little crate thing that I keep a lot of my fandom jewelry in. That's a lot. I wish I was the kind of person who could just wear badges and be totally fine with it, but I'm so paranoid. I wear a lot of backpacks, okay? I think that's what the problem is. The constant like putting backpack on, slinging backpack over the front so that I can pull something out of it. Like, that's just what the issue is. This is all of my Harry Potter stuff. I'm not getting rid of any of this because I use this... If I don't use it in photos throughout the year, then I definitely use it when I have my Harry Potter Christmas tree. And these are my ornaments. So, I'm more than happy to keep all of that. These are just like pouches, so I can use them when the um, when the plastic breaks. I'll start transferring stuff into this to keep it safe. It's not a huge amount in that, and to be frank, I don't think I showed it to you before, but it was pretty full, and I'm left with a whole bunch of plastic. I can use it for some other storage until it falls apart, and then it can be taken to recycle. Got to get the most juice out of it. Just had a delightful nap on the floor, ready to. 
go through small things. My brother is like 100% obsessed with the Funko Pop figurine things and he used to buy me a lot of like bookish ones for birthdays and Christmas and things like that and I used to use some of them in photos which is great but I don't really use them anymore so I've decided I'm going to keep my Harry Potter ones for a little bit longer see if I can work them into some more photos because that's the ones that I would be using a lot more and the other ones I can just sell some of them also came in subscription boxes over the years so got that girl Wonder Woman this one I got at a movie premiere Elizabeth Bennet the doctor Claire from Outlander Batman Maui and Daenerys and Drogon those are all the non Harry Potter ones I have at the moment and some of them I do still love the look of them they just they would just sit on my shelves collecting dust or just never being used I will also be getting rid of my sonic screwdriver I don't love Doctor Who any less but I just don't really need a sonic screwdriver I don't think because I don't really tend to take a lot of Doctor Who themed photos <sighs> now I think this is the last box of merch that yeah that I hadn't decided what I was going to be doing with yet I don't need this these are the few things I'm keeping this is the stuff I'm going to get rid of I can get rid of these. These are some notebooks that were celebrating the release of Fantastic Beasts. They're kind of cool, but I know I'm not going to write in them. I think that's about it for that section of the prop cupboard because I purchased these drawers from Facebook Marketplace because if I can find something that's lightly used and just buy it secondhand rather than buying it new, then I tend to prefer to do that and when I purchased these earlier this year and started trying to fit all of my merch in here I already went through it so this was just one kind of brutal cull of things that I know what I'm really not going to use but didn't want to get rid of at the time it'll just sit in a drawer until I find it again and go oh that's so nice I can't believe I still have that and then I'll put it away and then I'll find it again I'll be like oh my god that's so nice I can't believe I still have that it'll just go on and on like that it's more than I was expecting to get rid of from that section, quite frankly, but you got to do what you got to do. And I'll probably go through those drawers again eventually, and if I haven't used those things in photos, then it'll be time to get rid of them. And now over in this corner is the stuff that I'm already getting rid of. So these are some books that I need to distribute somewhere for Books on the Rail. Um, this is bag of random stuff that I have to go through at some stage but I think it's like receipts and craft stuff so that can stay for the moment. This is the box of merch that I still need to sell so I'll add some of that stuff over here and then because I knew that I was going to be getting rid of a bunch of merch and stuff like that I have been keeping the wrapping from the packages that publishers send to me and that's what this big box is for. At the beginning of the year, this big box was full of merch that I got rid of. I'm now down to this, plus what I just got rid of. It, that's just a sample of the progress that I've made. Oh, I forgot. I also have merch down here, like our crepe mugs and stuff that I'm getting rid of. I'm getting rid of a lot, guys. Keeping that, keeping that. This is a sign, but I didn't really enjoy it, and I have a finished copy here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna reread it, and I'm gonna see if I like it enough to keep it. But if I don't, whatever. But I definitely don't like it enough to keep the arc. Somebody else can read that. Uh, there was still love by Favel Parrot. I really enjoyed this book, but I don't need to keep it. I don't think that I'm going to reread it, but I think that either my mum or my sister or Rian will like it, so I'll see if they want that first. I don't think I'm going to reread Noughts and Crosses. It was really interesting the first time, but I don't think I'm going to reread it. Try and reread that. I don't need to keep this. I don't need to keep this. I'm going to reread The Time Traveler's Wife because I thought I liked it at the time, but I have a feeling that I'm absolutely going to hate it on a reread, and I'm very interested to see what that's like. Don't need to keep the shifting fog. Keep going, girl, for a little bit longer. I kind of want to get rid of my Throne of Glass series. I reread the first book and I just really didn't enjoy it, but 
I didn't enjoy the first book that much the first time around, so I'm going to try and finish my reread of that series. And if I still am not enjoying it, then it's going. But I, I don't know. I just feel like a strong attachment to that. I think that was like the first one of the first like really really big authors that I met and it feels like kind of a milestone in my like blogging life. I think that's when I first met Jean from Happy Indulgence. That was like first big supernova that I went to possibly. It was just a big deal so I'm gonna keep it for a little bit longer even if I didn't love it. I've kept this because I really love the cover but I didn't really love the book. Sidekicks by Bill Kostakis. Did enjoy this but I don't think I'm gonna reread it. Getting up to the next shelf now. Keeping that, obviously. Uh, keeping that, I just got sent a finished copy, so I'm getting rid of the arc. Want to reread that? Possibly reread that. I couldn't get into Open Newton. It just really wasn't my thing. And from what I remember of when the last book in the series came out, people were not really happy with the series overall. So we'll leave that. These ones I want to reread because. I don't think I'm going to keep liking them. Um, keep. Keep for the moment. I just like the movie of this better. I'm not sorry. These are books that I finished this month, which I need to talk about later tonight. But I already know that I'm not going to keep these top two. I think that's it for the moment for those bookshelves because I want to reread quite a few of the older books and see how I like them now and a lot of them are available as audiobooks from my library so I'm just going to be able to reread them at a nice pace next year and that's going to be my plan and I've got a whole bunch of books in the other room to get rid of. Wow. I'm here in my bedroom now and this thing behind me is the entire bookcase of books that I'm going to be unhauling. From here upwards, hello, are uh, all of the books that I featured in my previous video that I did back in like March or April I think and I will link that below. I'm not going to go through all of them because there were 88 books back then and I've only gotten rid of a few of them so there's still quite a few there and you know what if you want to watch me read out all of their titles you can do that in the other video because it took long enough then. And this doesn't include like these are all the books that I just... Whoa. Well, these are all the books that I just pulled out of my bookshelf before. I know that there are so many books in there that I'm probably going to get rid of in 2020 as I reread them. They're just not fresh enough in my mind for me to go, yeah, I don't think I want to reread that. These ones have met, had a bigger impact on me and I know for a fact that I'm not uninterested in rereading them, just like it wouldn't be a priority for me. I think it's just getting to the point where I'm not rereading books as often as I used to because my collection has grown and because there's so many books out there that I want to experience and I want to kind of broaden my reading scope rather than just rereading a few favorites. That's just where I'm at. Hopefully I can take photos and get some of these up for sale and get rid of a lot of them before the end of the year. I would really love to not have an entire bookshelf full of books that I don't want anymore in my room next year. If you're really curious, this is what we've got going on here. I know I went through my bookshelves just before and gave you reasons for why I wanted to get rid of most if not all of the books that I was pulling out of my shelves, but I'm not going to do that for this section because there's just too many. So as a blanket statement, these books are like I said for those ones, are the books that I might have really enjoyed but I don't think that I will reread again. Books that I didn't enjoy and definitely won't reread again. Books that I really didn't enjoy and DNF'd. Or books that I just didn't want in my collection anymore. If you have any questions about the books that I'm unhauling and you really really want to know why it made it onto the unhaul thing and it just blows your mind that it's in there, feel free to comment and I will give you some backstory on it but I can't give backstory on that many books I just I don't have the energy and I don't have the time and I don't have the will I got a couple of questions about this the last time I did an unhaul and just to make it clear I'm not going to be sending these overseas postage within Australia is ridiculous 
postage internationally from Australia is even more ridiculous. I don't personally have the funds to be able to do that. Like, I'm looking to sell these books to people in Australia, preferably people who can pick them up, if not people who are willing to pay for postage, but I'm not just going to be sending books off on my own budget. I, I'm not rich. I don't have the ability to do that, and I will be donating the ones that don't get sold to local charities. Stepsister by Jennifer Donnelly. We Are Blood and Thunder by Kezia Lugbo. Once in Future by Amy Rose Capetta and Corey McCarthy. Collision by Victor Dixon. One Day by David Nichols. Influence by Sarah McCorkadale. Obsidio by Amy Coffin and Jay Kristoff. And I feel like I have to go into detail about this one because you may be able to tell from just looking at it that this book is fucked. So I found this in Big W when I was going to get my own copy of Obsidio. And this is just like a complete misprint. So we've got Obsidio here. Everything's upside down in it. Uh, you can see a misprinting here with like cyan, magenta, yellow, black, white, everything, nothing is lined up the way it is supposed to be. Uh, it's just completely ruined. And I let people talk me into buying this because we were kind of joking about how it looked like Aiden, which is the psychotic computer AI thingy in this series. We were joking about how that had printed this book and just put it on shelves and I thought it was really funny at the time and so I bought it. Do I still need it in my collection? No. Sweet Sorrow by David Nichols. New World Rising by Jennifer Wilson. Let the Right One In by John Ashvid Linkfist. Two Ravenclaw House editions of Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban from Bloomsbury. I didn't request for these books to be sent to me and I don't mind that they were. I just am not collecting all of the house editions. I collect Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone in various covers and I don't have the room to be able to collect the complete series in various editions. Mirage by Samaya Dowd, Heart of Iron by Ashley Poston, Of Fire and Stars by Audrey Colthurst, The Emerald Sea by Rochelle Mead, Monuments by Will Kostakis, The Starlight Watchmaker by Lauren James, Fated by Terry Terry, Star World by Audrey Colthurst and Paula Garner, Aurora Rising by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff, The Flat Share by Beth O'Leary, The Chain by Adrian McKinty, Angel Mage by Garth Nix, The Tales of Mr. Walker, Hotel Dog with a Nose for Adventure by Jess Black, The Magnolia Sword, A Ballad of Mulan by Sherry Thomas. This is the ARC version of this. I was going to keep it and then Alan and Unwin sent me a finished copy of it the other day. Less by Andrew Sean Greer. Whisper and Weapon by Lynette Noni. Queen of Nothing by Holly Black. Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. This is the illustrated edition and this is a paperback copy. Spells and Charms, a movie scrapbook. This is also a Harry Potter thing that was sent by Bloomsbury. Stormbreaker by Anthony Horowitz. James and the Giant Peach by Roald Dahl, The BFG by Roald Dahl, and The Witches by Roald Dahl. The Memory Keeper's Daughter by Kim Edwards. A Telling of the Tales by William J. Brooke. A Town Called Dust by Justin Woolley. Believe Me by J.P. Delaney. The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe by C.S. Lewis. Isaac Asimov, I, Robot. End of Windy Poplars by L.M. Montgomery. Anne's House of Dreams by L.M. Montgomery. And of Ingleside by Ellen Montgomery. Of Mice and Men by John Steinbeck. The Harp in the South by Ruth Park. An entire collection of The Chronicles of Narnia. Blasphemy, I know. There's only a few books from the Narnia Chronicles that I really, really loved as a kid. And I love them in certain editions. And I think if I ever wanted to reread these books, I would probably do so on my Kobo from library ebooks rather than having physical versions of them. I don't have any other emotional ties to these sets, so that's fine. Uh, Newt Scamander, a movie scrapbook. Harry Potter, Hogwarts, a movie scrapbook. Sharp Objects by Gillian Flynn. The Shadow Magic Trilogy by John Lenahan. The Phantom Tollbooth by Norton Juster. Thread Up by Rebecca Turner. It's so dusty, so dusty. In Between Days by Vicki Wakefield. Aeon by Alison Goodman, The Main Inheritance by Rosamund Simon, You by Carolyn Kepnes, Carrie by Stephen King, Empire of Storms by Sarah J Maas. I know that I said that I was having like issues with getting rid of my Throne of Glass series, but I'm also tied to like the first four books because they're the ones that I actually got signed by Sarah J Maas. I never finished Empire of Storms, so 
I'm not like particularly picky about that. Liberty by Nikki McWatters. Lady of the Shades by Darren Shan. Interview with the Vampire by Anne Rice. Inkart by Cornelia Funk. Insignia by S.J. Kincaid. The Mausoleum Murder by Catherine Roberts. The Amazon Temple Quest by Catherine Roberts. Just Flesh and Blood by Jane Caro. The Shining Girls by Lauren Bukes. Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil by John Berent. Ink Spell by Cornelia Funk. Hating Alice and Ashley by Robin Klein. Goal of His Travels by Jonathan Swift. I Had Such Friends by Meg Gatlin Vaness. Betrothed by Wanda Wiltshire. Confused by Wanda Wiltshire. Muse of Nightmares by Lainey Taylor. One of these is an arc. The Sultan's Seal by Jenny White. The Perfect Mother by Amy Malloy. Stranger the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. The Blinding Knife by Brent Leakes. Neverland by Margot McGovern. <laughs> Ink Death by Cornelia Funk. The Diabolic by S.J. Kincaid. The Hazelwood by Melissa Albert. Amber and Dusk by Lyra Celine. <laughs> Rose Blood by A.G. Howard. Before She Ignites by Jodie Meadows. 105, just in this business. Uh, another two that I want to get rid of in the other room, like books that I've read this month. And then I think I just counted that and that was like 76. So we're looking at 183 books that I'm getting rid of. And this is the easy part because now I have to go through and I have to take photos of these books so that I can sell slash give them away. Well, it's only 8 o'clock on a Saturday night. I got nowhere else to be. So maybe I'll just do that. I should have just gotten rid of the books when I wanted to get rid of them. Just, mm, past Sarah, you're a dumbass. Can't help that now. Hi. <laughs> I just gave you like 15 minutes of belly rubs. <laughs> it's not enough. It's not enough. Last Saturday I took photos of all the books that I was selling and I put them in our name of the book book club Facebook group first and let those people have first go at it. So I've already gotten rid of a few books. And then this morning, this one woke me up at quarter to seven. We don't get Saturday sleep-ins here anymore. I couldn't get back to sleep. And I was like, you know what? It's time. And so I took some final photos of the merch that I was selling and put everything up on Facebook. And oh my God, it's been a very big day getting through everything. <laughs> Are you right? Are you right? It took me a lot longer than I thought to take photos of everything and upload it onto Facebook. I started at about seven and I think by the time I had finished everything, it was nearly 11 or past 11 or something like that. So it had taken a fucking long time. And then I had to start responding to people's comments and messages and everything, trying to get everything sorted. I know I did this to myself. I know that I could have uploaded smaller amounts instead of uploading everything all at once, but I just wanted to get rid of things and I have gotten rid of quite a few things. So I'm proud of that, but I feel like it's going to be quite a while. Like there's still some progress to be made. I had a couple of people pick up things today and then I have packed five satchels. I need to go to the post office on Monday and I need to get bigger satchels because I only had a small and a medium as like a size reference and for some of the orders those were just not big enough. So I need to go back to the post office because my local post office didn't have any of the large satchels and when I went to go to a Westfield shopping centre <laughs> it's nearly Christmas. Every man and his dog was out there and every man and his dog lost their fucking mind and forgot how to park or how to even drive in a car park it was out of control i just <laughs> it got to the point where i'd been driving around for so long that the post office was actually closed and at that stage i was just like i just i just gotta leave i just gotta leave I'm gonna get some large satchels in the city on monday because there's a post office just around the corner from my work which should be a little bit more convenient. Yeah, especially because it does not involve a car park. I just need to walk there. I'll show you what the damage is so far. I ended up having to create a spreadsheet to keep everything in check because there was just messages flying everywhere and I could not keep track. 
So down here I've got a bunch of books that someone's picking up tomorrow and also like five or six parcels that I need to send when I go and get my groceries. And this is what's happening in here. So it doesn't look like it but quite a few books have been taken and there's more space now. I think I'm about done unhauling for the year. Not forever and definitely not with this amount of books. It's just been a really exhausting week with multiple trips to the post office, shipping things, organising things, chasing people up because they kept forgetting to respond or send payment or whatever was going on. So that was just a lot of back and forth. And for the first time since I started my job in July 2018, I have more than two days off to take as a holiday and I don't want my holiday to be spent stressing about sending these books or organizing other people. I just want to relax. I feel like my brain is just fried and I really, really need some time to calm down. This is the state of my study at the moment. Uh, this is a basket of like clothes and stuff that I need to donate plus some books that I just received from publishers. Uh, that box is full of stuff that I use to pack things like to cushion items and all that. And then we've got over here and I have tidied my room up much better than it was last time. This is what's left. Someone just picked up the last of the books. So yeah, that's still quite a lot. This is the, like the what's left of the merch, the smaller merch. And then over in my cupboard, I've got the Funkos, Sonic screwdrivers, um, bulkier items and stuff like that. Basically I've tidied up everything with the expectation that one room can have all of the stuff that I want to sell and that is my bedroom because that's where the bookshelf is with like all of the books that I want gone and so I've brought the other stuff in here and this will just be like where those things live. Just so everything's not spread out around the house because it gets overwhelming when you walk into every single room and there's something that you have to do or something that you have to sell or something that you don't want in your life anymore but is still just there. Let's be real, there's still a lot of stuff in that room and I was naive and overly optimistic thinking that I could get rid of all or most of the stuff in one fell swoop. That was never going to happen. But one positive thing from this is that some of the stuff that I sold this time is stuff that no one was looking at in the previous time when I tried to sell some merch. Yes, I've still got a lot of stuff left over, but I think it's just a sign that there are different people coming and going and looking at things at different times. So if I just keep putting the books and the merch out there, eventually the right person is going to find it at the right time and I'll be able to get rid of it one way or another. It will leave my life because my end goal is to get rid of all those books get rid of the bookshelf and make that into a reading corner or a craft corner or just some nice place to sit that isn't like in the lounge room in front of the tv or in my study at a desk just like a nice relaxing corner despite the fact that there's still a lot of stuff in there it doesn't feel like an anti-climax to me because i did get rid of so much and obviously that's just a sign that i just had a whole lot of stuff to get rid of, like a truly obscene amount. One thing that I've learned throughout the entire process of this unhaul is that I don't want to do this again and hopefully I will be able to stick to my guns and not get to the stage where everything just feels so overwhelming and intimidating that I'm paralyzed by regret and don't want to do anything about it. Hopefully I'll be able to keep that in mind and I will not ever end up in the same situation again and I'll just take it step by step and eventually one day I will be in the place that I want to be. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you've enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time. Bye!